I, I guess we should check out this trailer, right? Uh, so this this popped up over the past 24 hours, and I know everybody's asking me about it. I definitely exhausted a little bit of concern where uh, I was like, I think this, we're getting buddy. Like we're within like 40 days or some shit like that. I think we might be pushing our luck here. So if there is something that happens after this, by the way, where the hell's the timer? Do we have the timer? 43 days, is that what we're at right now? If there is a situation after this where Square Enix somehow does release another one of their shock trailers, or which is what I kind of call all of their launch trailers, and they just have a ton of spoilers in them, it's like, ah, dude. We're like a, a little over a month of this game coming out, and Mother Pfeiffer, we do not even know what Zack's actual involvement in the story is. I kind of love it. They are teasing us in every single way, but there is a massive enigma to this story that we don't know. But to be real, I almost do not want to know. Still no 4K? That is very Square Enix. Sephiroth. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. What happened to this place? It was Sephiroth. I got I got goosebumps. It can't be. He wants to finish what he started and rule over the planet. You coming? Way ahead of you. <laughs> Let's get to work. You are truly a model soldier. <laughs> we can handle this. I will reclaim our world. Wow! <laughs> Shit, I'm crying, bro. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Tears in my eyes. <laughs> Holy shit. Who who edited this fucking trailer? <laughs> God damn. I, I didn't even have a chance to uh, process any individual moments and shit of what was going on because the, the, the pace of it all is like, Jesus Christ. Very hopeful that this actually leads to a 2024 PC release. I am super hopeful. Uh, I'm watching it again. Hold on a second. What happened to this place? It was Sephiroth. It can't be. He wants to finish what he started and rule over the planet. You coming? Way ahead of ya! We have to help them! Let's I'm seeing work. new locations and everything, dude. You are truly a model soldier. People! We can handle this. I will reclaim our world. So just this goddamn uh, absolute guttural scream here. Listen to this shit. <laughs> Wait, what is Five seconds. All right, here we go, chat. You ready? I will reclaim our world. <laughs> I'll edit together the next one. Let me let me take the next trailer to cut. To be real, I don't want to go over and literally pause and repause and look for things. Don't tell me shit, chat. Don't tell me shit. If if you've seen like all these like bits and nuggets and shit, I'm at, I'm at a point where um I'm just down for like the hype. This got me nice and hype and excited. I'm kind of at a point where it's like, yeah, I saw the Midgar Zalem. I saw potentially what was a, uh, a a different weapon, like the, the weapon that was maybe like teased in the previous trailer. I actually don't want to pick things out because I feel like if we start really digging in and picking out frame by frame and shit, I feel like I don't want to know everything before this comes out. I don't. Theory crafting is fun, right? But we're like about to know. Right? And we have spent how many years theory crafting shit with nothing? And now there is no more theory crafting. 
right? The theory crafting is, is an enjoyable because we, we do not know, but at the same point, it's like, well, we're about to have an answer. Now I wanna know where it actually is going. Now I just wanna know what their plans are because as much as, you know, a lot of the deviations of stuff was kind of weird and it's sort of a tough swallow in remake part one, I ended up really liking a lot of those things and what they ended up doing with the story. Like bringing back Zack is some bold shit, much less, like reevaluating the entire story of FF7 and making it a sequel and shit is like, whoa, holy, what are we doing here? And then hiding that shit in like the story is like, buddy, what the fuck is going on? I ended up really enjoying the discovery process. And what I want to do is to go through like that discovery process again with this game. I, I don't need to be reacclimated that the things that or reaffirmed of my, my thought processes, much less all that kind of shit. I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking for a good game, dude. Japanese trailer next? Nah. Now, I don't want to look at it again. I don't want to look at any of the frames in that trailer again, to be real. Yeah. Uh, sorry, chat. <laughs> Officially the most exciting game of 2024 uh, through Famitsu Magazine in Japan and uh, obviously Game Awards. Of course, the trailer goes over a lot. We're not going to go over any more of it, but we're going to talk about regional stuff, which is which is cool. Right, but I still feel like they're holding out. I feel like there is definitely a like a level of we don't we don't know everything. So Junon Harbor or as I like to call it, Junion Harbor, an urban residential zone with the fortified metropolis looking over the ocean in addition to housing for Shinra personnel. High-end boutiques and restaurants line its streets. Current preparations are underway for the Rufus Shinra presidential inauguration parade. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going down exactly the way it be in the old one. Looks like concept art. No, dude, these, these characters over here are definitely indicative of a... Uh, an in-game render. I'm curious how that'll look when the game comes out. The Shinra 8, which is maybe a new title? Maybe it was called this back in the day? I don't know. Uh, the Shinra cruise ship that ferries travelers between the planet's eastern and western continents. After departing from Junon, it heads to Costa del Sol, a part of the onboard entertainment. The ship plays host to a Queen's Blood tournament. Oh, cool. So that's how they're going to introduce that. That was different, right? Before, it was just like a big-ass boat, and you just, like, hung out. They make this, like, a luxury cru cruise liner or some shit now? Interesting. A gregarious cat fights atop his sturdy Moogle mount who provides both mobility and support. Balam Garden back here. When Kate's not duking it out, his high-tech helper aids him in hacking computer system and telling fortunes. Elena, which we've seen before, maybe a rookie. She is uh, skilled with her fists and a gun as anyone else in the Turks unit of Shinra's general affairs division. She and her partner Rude are tasked with pursuing the black robed figures, which she is more than happy to do if it means being assigned a mission with Seng. New character, Captain Tidiv, captain of the Shinra 8 vessel responsible for overseeing safe patches of all between Junon and Costa del Sol. He earned a sterling reputation amongst his crew thanks to his unnerving devotion and duties. The most evident during the various festivities held abroad is Vestal, which he personally and passionately uh, amuses. Combat, new... Let's take a look at what the new additions the party can do in battle. Yuffie shit, right? Yuffie shit. Yuffie quickly strikes enemies with a large throwing star, the speed of which she attacks you at the A to B faster than most. When her throwing star is out, Yuffie can unleash magic-infused ninjutsu to punish foes. Yuffie excels at chaining her attacks together and switching their elemental affinity. Okay, so this is the same. Doppelganger allows her to attack in tandem with clone, enabling her to exploit enemies' weaknesses more efficiently. Hurling throwing star at enemies allows Yuffie to keep up pressure from uh, a distance. While her throwing star is out, she can also pelt her foes with ninjutsu. Whatever element her target is weak against, Yuffie has an ninjutsu spell for it. This is all fairly similar to everything that was in Integrate. Basic attacks, Kate Sith darts around the battlefield with an agility of acrobatic or acrobat or perhaps cat assailing enemies from every side. When he wants to switch things up, he brings out his Moogle pal, uh, changing his attacks. It's cool to see Kate Sith like actually off of the Moogle and doing shit. It's weird, it certainly is weird. Kate said the exclusive moves can hurt enemies or buff allies, but most rely in luck in some way. Let's Ride, however, allows him to hop on the Moogle, enhancing his regular attacks and his unique abilities. While riding the Moogle, Sith can give enemies the boot with drop kick. Once his Moogle's attack have been filled with the Moogle meter, everyone gets crazy unique shit, right? He can also buff his companions with abilities like defense. It looks like a synchronized musical. Damn, this is looking good, dude. Holy crap. Powerful attacks in which two characters can team up in the tide of battle. Yes, we know. Fill the synergy gauge by using abilities and unleash the synchronized assault. Yuffie and Kate Sith attack in tandem with a secret ninja technique. I haven't seen this. Holy friggin'. Oh my God, it's tiny and stupid. 
Yeah, we have some uh, actual high resolution renders. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, wow. That is quite high res. I love it. Recreating the uh, the old FF7 key art back in the, the discs and shit. It was part of the manual art way back in the day. This one's a bit different because you don't actually see Wutai, right? Usually this is on, she's actually on the mountain, I think, in the old one. I have changed it a little bit. This is cool as hell looking, dude. Holy crap. You know what we should be looking out for? I'm curious of like technical things changing here. So uh, I'm wondering if we should be looking out for foliage moving, right? Things like the goddamn environment reacting a little bit more, which was not present in the previous build. I'm curious if that's going to be changing. Whoa, that's huge. That's huge. No cloud. Cloud is duct taped to the player in the OG game until he is, uh, you know, quite literally disabled. Chat, I wouldn't get too excited about this because again, there are parts in the OG game, obviously where Cloud isn't around. And I don't think this is specifically that, but there could be a moment like that where it's like, hey, you bitches go that way. I'll go this way. I mean, that happens in remake part one. If you could actively configure your party and have like an, an uh, choose your running character, like your world interacting character, that would be amazing if it didn't have to be Cloud because clearly they're together. Like 99% of the story, they are together, most likely. But the choice of running around with Barrett or running around with Tifa, which does happen, you know, obviously in, in even Remake. I hope so, man. That'd be badass.